Welcome, folks. I'm Jabby Kowei, joined by Char Kirk. What's up? We are talking about Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. This is our non-spoiler review. Many of you guys have probably already seen our first impressions on his thoughts video. We did cover quite a bit of our feelings, generally. <laughs> we tried to keep it as vague as possible, but I thought we could go a little bit more in-depth without going into spoilers. Of course, this is going to be completely non-spoiler. If we say anything that is story, it's going to be what has already been revealed in the trailers. Black Panther Forever. Black Let's Panther see. Forever. Black Panther, it's not. <laughs> Black Panther like Forever. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. It stars Letitia Wright as Shuri, Tano Chuerta as Namor, Angela Bassett as Ramonda, my queen, Lupita Nyong'o as Nakia, Denai Guerrero as Okoye, I love, Winston Duke, amazing, Martin Freeman as Everett K. Ross. Okay, so Achara, since you're on a roll, why don't you tell us about the story a little bit, just to give the audience a little bit of the, you know. <laughs> Black Panther Wakanda Forever picks up right after T'Challa dies, with Wakanda grieving the loss of their leader and his family grieving the loss of their brother, son. The country is in turmoil mm -hmm. and nefarious outside people, countries are trying to take advantage of the situation and uh, steal some resources. Wow, that is a very familiar story. Just look it up in history, you guys. Anyway. Oh, I thought you were talking about something else. Okay. No, just like historically, that sounds about right. What you clued me in on with your little summary is the vulnerability that Wakanda is experiencing and I realized that vulnerability is actually one of the major themes of this movie mm -hmm. that we haven't really talked about. That's the driving force behind a lot of the action in the movie. Well, it's a film about dealing with grief and it feels very appropriate in the sense that a main character, a main actor died in real life, right? right. right? How do we deal with that as people as an audience and also how do we deal with that within the movie as characters right. as well what was fascinating for me to discover is that ryan coogler almost quit after uh chadwick boseman died really yeah like he was gonna just straight up retire wow. because it affected him so deeply i was learning i think through cosmic wonder the other day ryan coogler was trying to pass uh chadwick boseman the script and chadwick boseman was like i don't want to read it yet until the studios had a chance to read it or something like that like why would an actor want the studio to read it first basically chadwick boseman was putting it off because he already knew his time was short and so oh my god that's heartbreaking yeah and so obviously it had a deep impact on ryan coogler and the film when you watch it you realize it's a very personal film yeah it's cathartic in a way for ryan coogler and i'm sure that uh, you know a number of the cast involved who i think so worked with chadwick boseman yeah i've like, been listening to a lot of interviews from cast members yeah. and it seems like everyone was deeply affected yeah, by this loss so the performances and the way the story is told feels very real yeah. because it's informed by real events. While I've seen some uh, anger online about, you know, why don't we re recast T'Challa? I get where people are coming from who have been expressing and echoing that sentiment, but I feel like this is such a genuine story because it's informed by real stuff. Mm -hmm. In the first impressions on his thoughts video, I had said that Black Panther Wakanda Forever is a better film than Black Panther. I feel like I have to walk that back a little bit, not because I was lying or because I, you know, disagree with that thought now or that sentiment. It's just that they're two different movies. You know, Black Panther is more fun. While it does touch on real stuff, you know, it's more fleeting. Uh, this is very much informed by real stuff, namely, you know, Chadwick Boseman's death. And because of that, it has a completely different, you know, attitude and just, again, not, sorry to use the word again, but feeling than the first one. Yeah, when I watched uh, the first Black Panther movie, it was just so different than what we'd seen before. I loved the world that yeah. the movie invited me into. Wakanda was just so cool. The characters were so much fun. I really enjoyed that. And so I feel like this movie doesn't capture that feeling. And I don't think it's supposed to. Right. Because, you know, we have that to build upon. That's the right. foundation. And this movie takes us further. Right. I think about my experience with Black Panther and I really, really, really enjoyed it. Mm. But my experience walking out of this, it like, it really left a hard impression on me, like an emotional impression. Like I walk out and it's like, I just thinking about the movie can get me emotional because yeah. of like how deep it goes. And it doesn't feel like your typical Marvel movie. Right. It's very confident in the sense of like, yes, it exists within the MCU and it very much feels like it exists in the MCU, but it doesn't feel like this is a movie where a lot of cool action and stuff happens and it's mm -hmm. end of the world situation which it has, 
But also, I feel like, especially recently, a lot of the Marvel properties have this sense of like, oh, and this is the movie, plus here's a bunch of stuff that you're looking forward to in the next movie right. or in the next few movies. Right. And this didn't feel like that. Right. One of the things that I've been seeing on YouTube a lot is this weird negative rhetoric surrounding Black Panther Wakanda Forever. And I thought wow. we could try to adju- uh, address that real quick. What it has to do with is, I guess, virtue signaling and political overtones. In summary, it's like white people are bad, is the, is the notion that some people seem to believe that this movie is saying. And I'm like wait, what? I didn't get that from this movie at all. There's a lot of people making assumptions about the film without having seen it about what the direction it goes. It's not saying outright that like white people are bad. That's not the narrative. But I think it's showing the story of this thing that has been happening throughout history, which is outsiders trying to take resources yeah. from other countries. Doesn't matter if you're white or any other color. Right. This is something that happens everywhere. Once yeah. people know that there is something valuable in a certain country or a certain region, suddenly everybody else is trying to get in on it. Yeah, I feel like that's honest to express that in even in the fictional universe, I feel like it's still honest to express that. And I think that where the film goes story wise with that in mind, I think it's strong and I think it's actually helpful to the story. I don't feel like it's outright saying, you know, shame on white people. I guess what I'm getting to is that while there are political overtones in this film, that's not unique to Black Panther Wakanda Forever. So many Marvel films have political overtones now, and even DC is jumping in on that bandwagon, as we saw with Black Adam. Sure. Well, this is just par for the course. It's like, if you're going to be mad at Wakanda Forever for that, you should be mad at all comic book films going forward, because they're all doing this in some way. Yeah, and I think it's just a way to kind of ground the story more and make it feel more relatable to, to us in real life. I feel like the emotional core of the story as well, or at least one of them, is this notion of people just trying to hold on to their way of life people yeah. trying to hold on to their families and their culture and i feel like that is something that is so relatable for a lot of us yeah. you know so how did you feel about the story overall this is two hours and 40 minutes it's considerably longer than the first movie i thought it was fascinating i also especially loved the introduction of namor and the Talukan. Mm-hmm. I thought it was so cool, just the world that they had built and the homage that they had paid to the different cultures that they had drawn upon for that. It was incredibly moving and very confident to make it about people going through grief. Yeah. It's not what you would normally think about when when you think about coming to a Marvel movie. You're like, I want to see the action. I, w- I want to see my superheroes kick ass. And you get that. You get that in spades. But you also get this deep emotional story as well, which is incredibly moving. I was... I was glad that I brought tissues because I definitely needed them. Well, one of the cool things that we are seeing more of, I feel like, in movies and, and shows these days is the leverage of consequences. Because it used to be that things happen in movies and you just sort of check your brain at the door. Consequ- there's no consequences to anything. Stuff happens and the movie keeps going. Yeah. The story just keeps going, whatever. Like, you're worrying too much about that, Jabby. But now, like, there are actual consequences. There's cause and effect in stories these days. At least I'm noticing it more than, you know, in the past. 10 years. Black Panther Wakanda Forever brings that in spades where anytime there's action, generally speaking, it has some kind of consequence. Every scene has a consequence that affects the next scene. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that is the way you should tell a story. When a character makes a decision, good or bad, it has a ripple effect on the rest of the story. That's why for me, though it's two hours and 40 minutes, because I was enveloped in the emotional value because of the, the grief, because I was enveloped in the cause and effect of the story where one thing affects the next thing. I, it's like, I don't even notice the time because it's, for me, it was so engaging. I thought the story was really good. I, you know, d- taking what they had to work with, which is the death of your main actor from the previous installment. Yeah. Like the fact that they were able to tell a story this powerful off of that is so marvelous to me. Yeah. Um, and now I, I did see some rhetoric either in comments or in other reviews of people, you know, saying how they're capitalizing on Chadwick Boseman's death. I do understand why people would think that. Right. There's two directions this could have gone, right? The the one they did and recasting. And I think that if they were to recast, 
the first thing everybody's going to do is go, oh, but he's not Chadwick Boseman, no matter who it is. Yeah, the comparison is just going to be too great. Yeah. Everyone would be comparing this poor actor to Chadwick Boseman, who was amazing. Yeah. And even if they did do a fantastic job, yeah. the one comment everyone would be saying is, I liked Chadwick better, or he's not Chadwick, though. Yeah. I don't think there's any way to get around in our minds that we're watching someone replace someone. I mean, it's we're dealing with something like this right now with The Witcher. I don't know if it was Ryan Coogler or the studio. What they decided to do was just go, okay, let's just embrace this head on. Like, I think it was Ryan Coogler, maybe. Yeah, he, I don't... He wrote He wrote this. Yes, he did. Well, the story was his. Yeah. And, and to me, that was probably the smartest solution because it's like, okay, we're just going to deal with this because yeah. we can't recast it. And it's like, okay, what do we do? We just don't have a black Panther movie for years to come? No, that's not an option. So let's just embrace this and deal with this directly head on in order to move this story forward. We need to close the chapter yeah. and start a new one. Yeah. And that's what they did. Yeah. The action in the movie, I felt like for the most part was quite strong. Uh, as with most comic book action films, you know, your last... 20, 30 minutes is gonna have a ton of action, right? Yeah. And this film was no different. I don't think that's a spoiler to say. That was the only section of the film where I was like, oh, I wish they did this differently. But outside of that, I, fe I felt like the action was fantastic throughout the movie. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was really exciting to kind of see how the people from Talokan were fighting the Wakandans and like just how badass everyone they was. They were formidable. Yeah, yeah, they were really scary. Yeah, yeah. They were, they were standing toe to toe with the Wakandans and we know how badass they are. Right. These guys were scaring them. Yeah, see, what I love about that is that what you have are a set of bad guys or enemies, I should say, instead of bad guys. Adversaries. Uh, adversaries that are formidable. Yeah. And that is what you want. From the get-go in this movie, you are afraid of these guys. You're like, dang, these guys are scary. They're strong. They're very, they're wicked powerful. How are the, how are the Wakandans gonna stand up to these guys? Like, yeah. I, that's literally the thought I was having when watching them, because I'm like, this is so interesting, like the premise, the, because you know you have no idea who these guys are, where they're coming from, and you're learning, I mean, if you didn't read the comics or whatever, or watch the movie yet, um, you're, you're learning as the film goes, who these guys are and what kind of powers they have. And it makes them really scary mm. uh, in a way that I was not expecting. When you see the way it's being leveraged in the film to strike fear into the Wakandan characters, it's like, oh, this is cool. Like, I'm feeling their fear with them. Overall, like, the more I think about this movie, the more I appreciate it. The more, yeah. the more I really, really, really like it. Anyways, you guys, thanks so much for hanging out. Hopefully you enjoyed this discussion. And if you're still here, um, hashtag Jabby Achara forever. I don't know. Jachara forever. Oh, there you go. Jachara forever. How about that? Yeah. Hashtag Jachara forever if you're still here. Thanks so much for hanging out. I'm Jabby Koi. This is... Achara Cook. Peace out.